Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Lavra and welcome back to another video on the channel. First of all, before we begin, I want to give a huge shout out to Rua Sleepy, Baddy Q and Sticks. They donated to help a huge cause of mine that I've been in need, so thank you so much. Today's video, we are beginning with the furry drama iceberg. Let me give you a, a bit of an explanation. So we have an image here of an iceberg. Uh, as it goes down, the worse it will be known. But suppose, uh, how I've done is, from the top, is the most known about cases of drama and the most known people and influencers of the drama. And as it goes down the list, you'll hear about more and more like less known dramas and stuff that people don't talk about. Or people may have talked about, but it's not really exactly known anymore, or it's not still talked about. So yeah, let's get cracking. <laughs> level 1. To begin with level 1, we have Kiro the Wolf. Yeah, I think we all know what happened. So Joshua Hoffman aka Kiro the Wolf was a furry YouTuber and prominent individual within the fandom and was very very well known specifically for his comedy YouTube videos he had garnered over over I believe a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube which is pretty big but in about 2018 um, zoo leaks of a zoo sadism chat basically dead animals and, necro and like necrophilia kind of shit where I exposed him and I believe a few other people having it done this stuff. Videos and images of him doing this were very prominent in the chat and he was exposed for that. He lost a lot of his credibility. There was an entire FBI investigation, police investigation and he's only recently made a return to YouTube which is disgusting so please stay away. Second, Hypnotist Sappho. If you don't know who Hypnotist Sappho is you need to be well, not locked up, but you, you consider yourself very, very lucky. Hypnotist Sappho is a leader of ZNA, or was one of the most prominent figures in the Zoophile community, or the Zeta community, for pushing for zoo sexual rights, which they should not have in the begin with, but that's something. Um, but they were one of the head causes of it, and it was absolutely disgusting what they did. They're now in some form of mental outpatient care, so that just shows you the type of person they are. The BLFC party or pizza party 2021 now you may say why is this so high on the list purely for the fact that to this day no one in the fandom can speak or say that they want to order pizza without thinking about it if you think about it anytime anyone's in discord calls and anything whenever they mention pizza it's instantly thought about it's ingrained in your fucking brain now and it's just, you just can't think of it, you just cannot do anything with pizza anymore. It's like our version of pizza game, except not with kids. Rainforest 2015. Rainforest 2015 was a failure of a con, or was a fucking disaster of a con, that was mostly popularized by um, Internet Historian, it was one of the biggest things in the fandom to have ever happened, specifically because that video was a very, very big video, and it really put our fandom front and centre, and kind of spurred on the anti for a hate kind of bandwagon, but it wasn't obviously in the historian's intent to do that. But this is one of the biggest events that have ever happened in our history. The MFF gas attack 2014. Okay. The MFF gas attack 2014 was an event where someone released, um, cy not cyanide, that would be much worse, um, chlorine gas in the stairwell of um, the Hyatt Regency in Chicago. It's still never been found who it was, although some people have came and confessed to it, but with no true actual things happening to them. But basically this seeped into the air vent system and injured nine people, ho and hospitalized nine people, and I think ten one more was like, okay, he was sick, but he was okay. Shorty Trifler! Oh God! She must be from Dirty Dad. That's what I'm saying! We now begin with level two. So level two begins with Free For All. Now, Free For All was an alt-right or freedom loving um con that allowed pretty much anyone to go so if you think of the worst of the worst of the fandom they were allowed to go um they banned very few people and had very openly alt right wing republican conservative leaning people flocked to it and it was just a shit show that involved a lot of us youtubers who were taking the piss out of it and one dude who decided to call everyone t slurs despite them being cis people i don't understand okay lil nas x is a furry so in july i believe 2020 or 2021 lil nas x took photos in a bathtub with an aliexpress fursuit a lot of people got mad at this due to the fact that no actual artist was contacted for it 
instead buying it off um, an AliExpress or some cheap website like that. But I believe later on an artist did get in contact but was later ghosted by Lil Nas X. It was clearly some form of publicity stunt um, or a meme because I know he likes to meme on shit. But yeah, furry NFTs. So NFTs are non-fungible tokens. They're basically something that you pay for to buy a link to a piece of artwork. And Miles DF which is who is an artist who already has me blocked on Twitter despite me never having any interactions with him. He was, people don't like him because both he was in the alt right. Uh, he has a horrific um, character that uses the like America first bullshit or Turning Point USA bullshit. But not only that, but like, the fact that he charges six thousand or like extortionate. I don't know I mean extortionate. Extortionate prices for commission when the quality of his art is mid at best. It doesn't actually go up, and his anatomy is bullshit. These are all notes I'm taking from actual artists. He did recently make an NFT, and I'm 90% sure as of this recording, they has still has no bids on it, which is really, really funny. Achilles Argyle. Achilles Argyle was a troll who made a video saying that why they need racism and said a lot of bullshit in the in the <laughs> saying that China was right, but not only that, but he had animated foot fetish shit in the video all at once. Okay, what? I may be underselling a lot of these things, but I will try link to videos on these topics whenever I can. Pyrocynical is a furry. So in late 2020, or 2019, early 2019, or something like that, early 2020 it might have actually been, um, Pyrocynical was exposed for allegedly being a groomer, which I believe that those allegations all fell apart a few months later when he actually responded to them, but all that was exposed on Pyro was that he was an degenerate like me who enjoyed furry roleplay and he had multiple furry characters well I mean if you look just look at his profile picture Nani? Zootopia's demise. This is in reference to how horrifically bad or how down bad the fandom is for that movie. As soon as it came out, it was obviously like furry bait. It was they were trying to push into a market like ours. And as of recording, if I go on E621, look up Zootopia, we are looking at uh, 44,000 posts. Is Kidney for Minty? And this was in reference to a story that broke um, earlier, mid-2020, where an individual, um, a young individual, was in seek seeking um, treatment for some form of illness. And this was to do with a kidney transplant. And they rallied the furry community to help on Twitter, but because apparently, their, um, apparently because their doctor was refusing to operate or refusing to give the transplant, they uh, needed help and... Um, the furry community did, I believe they helped uh, Minty out with it, um, but a few months later, or a few weeks later into it, after all this got hype, I believe it came out that Minty, a bit of a bad person, or horrific person, apparently grooming m multiple un underage individuals, this is all alleged of course because I don't want to be sued, but apparently that's what happened, I will link obviously to a better video if you want the full story. Government representative furries. So there's been many articles showing that different government representatives in the US, so GOPs, senators, uh, councilmen, like all these different people that have some form of political power uh, have been exposed and have had to leave or have chosen to leave Congress or leave their local political area due to the fact that they have this furry lifestyle in the background, which is pretty mad. Pretty mad, not gonna lie. <laughs> Alright, now we move on to level three let's, let's go. go miners and furries in general on twitter who've had very cursed interactions specifically with brands and often just the general community like when we seen that idiot who posted that there should be a furry protection act for furries or come out as furries the thing that i never understand coming out as a furry because it's a hobby it's just stupid to come out as a furry but generally the more cursed side of it is seeing the shit that we get up to when we interact with brands killian cray aka scott scott 
Muskrat Kangaroo is an old dancer slash DJ, I guess, uh, that has had some very interesting, violent rea reactions to controversy. Specifically, I remember Cethercord making a video and it having a quote in it of, Give me his address, we can just have a talk. It's clear that he was going to assault someone, but he's had some very aggressive and horrific instances of like meeting with people but Garo Shadow Scale is a fur YouTuber and Twitch streamer who was exposed really for having these horrific parasocial connections with his fans where his fans would have to obey almost under a totalitarian government or some form of like DPRK kind of styled area. People say it was a cult but the meaning of cult is so loosely based that I don't believe it should be taken with any sort of large thing. I'd see it more as something like the DPRK or some form of oppressive government. Stuff like that. Like they couldn't talk to each other. They couldn't play games without stuff like that. Nitro Ruski and CCFC. Nitro Ruski is a whole other video so there's a trilogy made by my good friend Benjo Kazooie uh, no, <laughs> or lag over it on this entire thing and I've also made a video on CCFC but CCFC or Central Central City for a con or something something like that it was a con that was started up and was had like was basically made up of stolen money and treated both the guests of honor and the fa like the people arriving horribly there was a lot a lot of different things that went on but i will link to other videos somewhere in the top right kiwi farms now kiwi farms is a forum site that houses or specifically talks about lol cows now if you don't know what a lol cow is it's someone that and the best way i can say this it's someone that the internet together laughs at that may seem very mean but when you think of the stuff that these people have done to become that is pretty mad so an example of a lol cow was chris chan um another one would be wings of redemption <laughs> i just can't do it i can't take this shit no more man or even in our sphere would be people kiro kiro's a lol cow completely yes pretty much or my next individual that I'm speaking about and I cannot actually show images of this individual because they decided to strike both of my channels anytime I even displayed an image of the fursuit but I can do this because they can't strike this but Foxler and the Furry Raiders. Foxler and the Furry Raiders are much like something that will come up later on this tab but it's basically a it was a group for alt-right furs to congregate. They wore an armband, much like the Third Reich in Nazi Germany, and they expected to be welcomed into the community. Like, we could you not fucking make a t-shirt or something. P.K. Russell Inc. Bunny Scandal. So, P.K. Russell is a YouTuber that recently went, or not recently, a few years ago, went through some pretty bad uh, drama with another individual by the name of, uh, oh, Mythical Red Fox, there you go. Also, sorry for getting so dark, I went into dark mode on YouTube, but we're back. Mythical Red Fox made a video basically exposing um, an Ink Bunny, which Ink Bunny is not a good site in general, it's just full of uh, underage stuff to say the least. But they found PK Russell's account on that site, or it might have been another site, but it was filled with that type of art, I believe. And after they had found this, within days it was deleted and it was a whole other scandal, but that might be a future video sometime. But RMFC or Rocky Mountain Fur Con was one of the first videos that I featured on this channel and it was primarily what happened to Foxler and his friends when they tried to push around or tried to go in on a con and feel accepted because one of the owners was a very, very well-known individual within this con. This individual was also arrested for uh, misconduct with a child so yeah um that happened and generally so then people obviously were in outrage over what's happening at this con and it got removed and the con was shut down due to rising security costs kind of like caliper but this was the first major incident that we've seen with the raiders and uh, anything like that so next we have cobar in general it's fucking vile i've had interactions with some people on twitter that believe this is the right thing or this is an okay thing to do it's just not at all they do these weird mental gymnastics to jump through and believe that they can this is like in any way legal and try to even paint me out to be the person who's wrong here you're just mentally fucked i'm sorry it's just you're just mentally deranged odd ones out is a furry this is a pretty large one, but it's been mostly forgotten about now since they just went back to their continued thing. But Odd Ones Out was an actual furry, or I believe they were. They went to a con, was spotted, and they all even have their own suit, which is kind of cool. But yeah, that's 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 pretty 
pretty positive thing before we move on to our next dogsmith's cub art was something that was covered both on my channel and on lagoverts and it was how they were smoking or snoring copium in order to cope with feelings that they were having they were or did when they were younger draw cub art to stop some form of tendencies that they um, were held with and yeah it's a pretty bad thing but i don't know if they went further than that i believe they have made multiple apologies and yeah i guess they're okay now i don't know i haven't i haven't properly checked up on them in a while naps mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right i take that ah! level four this time so we begin with someone who i've spoken about a lot on this channel and people seem to always fucking forget about what this individual has done and i don't understand why so glitch and the many dramas there's been many dramas about Glitch being weird with his kind of audience, like he has an underage audience, but he's tweeted out really weird stuff, like he's even said that Cobart, like, isn't wrong. He, he's apologised for it now when he realised that that makes him look really fucking weird, but he's also apparently groomed many individuals, and even individuals who have helped him through that grooming situation, or he's just cut off completely. Glitch is probably one of the biggest scumbags in this community i would like to say personally i've known him since 2015 on to the next topic odin wolf odin wolf is a youtuber that is normally very easy for people to get into like to get into the actual fandom it brings people in and he is generally i believe a good youtuber or for some parts of it a lot of the drama came from an old twitter account that i won't go into detail about but a lot of people don't like about that but yeah, he's he's apologised for that and nuked his Twitter account. I believe he has a new one, but he's he's kind of a lewd tuber that I don't exactly like. But hey, it's all good. E six two one. E six two one is the most known thing within the fandom, and why it's placed so low of people not knowing it is that people outside of the fandom don't understand it. Because when you type up E six two one on Google, you get monosodium glutamate, which is a something you get a flavour enhancer that you put in food makes you fat. Look at America. E six two one is one of the largest sites to find furry porn. So yeah. Um but yeah, one of the largest sites to do that. And then next on the other site is Furry Valley. Furry Valley was a site that was aim appeal to our group. But it was prim primarily taken over and used by Zufa, and still is. I believe the owner of all that was even a Zufile, which is as alleged. A better video will be linked somewhere here. The Burned Furs. The Burned Furs were a group of people who didn't want any sort of sexuality or sexual stuff within the fandom. And again, people even called, I've been called a Burned Fur purely because of like even the last video I've made. And it's not Burned Fur behavior because Burned Fur behavior was primarily focused on gay people and the LGBT um, and it was more than just making videos saying hey we shouldn't be doing this it led to genuine attacks and assaults like physical assault on people not mental assault like Twitter users would claim but Crusader Cat Crusader Cat is a member of the furry raiders and I can't show any images because I'll get copyrighted again he's a member of the furry raiders who allegedly had penetrative sex with his cat countless mersuiting okay there's been a lot of mercy drama. Um, I don't really see why there should be mercy drama because while I don't like openly sexual stuff in the fandom, uh, or at least not being as open as we are, I don't understand why someone's sexuality or sex in general should be called into question or made like a huge deal when they find out how they have sex. But it's generally around stuff like this where you take photos of other individuals, which is disgusting. Like, that's that's a, such an invasion of privacy. And this individual is still on Twitter, by the way. Which is even more worse. Cothrix in defense of pedos. Cothrix was a dragon YouTuber who has a lot of good quotes, a lot of famous quotes. Oh, no. One of these was when he made a video in defense of pedophiles. I don't understand or don't know what sort of crack he was smoking. But this mostly did not have a good effect on his career. And is can normally now one of the largest cornerstones of anyone who knows Cothrix. They know the in, like the infamous video, basically. Furry triple murder. Basically, what happened was uh, an, in Fullerton, California, and uh, two individuals decided to go over to a household in in Fullerton and kill three individuals. This was believed to be over an argument 
within the fandom. All people involved were in, in involved in the fandom. The two individuals who were who done it were of Mr. Frank Felix and Josh Acosta. They were the two individuals. They killed three people and members of the furry fandom, and that's where it's, well they were all part of the furry fandom, but. This was one of the darkest days in it because they killed a triple homicide in the fandom and everything which was vile. I'm grossly underselling this because I may make a video on this summer time just to give actual clarity and details because I see anti furries using this as a, a reason almost not to join the community which is disgusting. Toggle the Rat. I hate this because he's part of my species. Toggle the Rat is the other... Uh, n I think he's the only one of Zooyard and Thou that's still alive. We missed. Of this city, Amir missed me. Um, but he is a zoophile and has openly, actively, char like charged onto Twitter and said that they can't find his opinion, like his appearance, which they found within numerous hours. But he's a horrific individual and is one of the largest contributors to the zoophile community, which I think is absolutely vile. But yeah. Dirty. Okay, so we're now on level 5, and here's something. That it is the largest level, has the most things on it. Growly. Growly was a very no well known for you for a YouTuber, no, for Sewer, who went to many cons and would often drunkenly sing karaoke. He was exposed in late 2018 to have had interactions with a minor. Or, yeah, very, very negative interactions with a minor. And his thing was basically ruined by that. But a lot of other things happened with him. I will link my good friend Benji's video on it. Brown Nosed Pup. Brown Nosed Pup was an individual on Twitter that basically had one of the most iconic quotes in the furry fandom. They were, um, they were a scat fetishist. If you know what that is, they enjoy eating the poo poo. Hee hee, they can put me in a hospital and make me take pills, but now I'm home and nobody can stop me from covering myself in shit. That's physically fucking disgusting. I don't think I've ever seen a more disgusting image than that. that is. So his entire persona has a brown muzzle due to the fact that it's always eating shit. Zosh. Zosh is a an artist that was exposed in 2017 to be using actual children as like children models as part of his artwork due to the fact that he does size play things and he used actual child bikini models to do this he's not only with that but then he's also been openly since then creating cub porn in either in secret or it's not posted but the kiwi farms has good documents about it <laughs> diesel raccoon is a fursuiter that was very well known for his horrific opinions and he often was seen saying horrific things during the political wars that we'll get into later but he was basically disgraced by every single individual and hated by the fandom now he often goes or threatens to go to places like megaplex or mff and does go to them, but he just see he, he he likes to say, oh well, I'm not actually going to the con if I don't stop it, step inside, and then wonder why no one wants, no one sees him because people are in there. Diesel, no one cares. He did and he did actually attempt to make a new sauna, and it was found out within hours. It was kind of funny. Alt furry slash Xanadu and Len Gilbert. These two are intertwined, but we'll tackle them separately. Alt furry slash Xanadu was the original furry raiders. It was a political haven for horrific individuals, pedophiles, alt furries, alt right, Nazis, zoo sadists, anything. If you were anything, you could take refuge there. It was disgusting. Individuals like Nate and Gately um, groomed children and use doxes against them to make force them to do sexual things on camera. And the leader of this group is who we're going to get into next. Len Gilbert is a failed writer and failed artist I believe as well, or failed well, political commentator who lives in Arizona. He is most well known for writing two books, uh, one was the Third Reich I believe, the Furry Reich or something like that. A story about a German soldier in 1945 falling into a furry realm where he takes control and lives out all his Nazi wonders or some bullshit. 
this one goes out to my boy, my boy Misha be Borkin, or Lorkin be Borkin. Uh, I'm kidding. No, Misha, Misha be Barkin made a video on this, but the carpet sample for a suit has to be the most disgusting thing that I've ever seen. This was the first who created purely from carpet samples. I don't know if it was from their own home or new, but it must have stunk like fucking shit if it was like old. That's actually disgusting. But yeah, the carpet sample for a suit, I'll link that video below. Jason Apex and Kbeer. People have relatively forgotten about these individuals, but Jason Apex is a disgraced artist and Kbeer is his wife. Um, they've scammed people out of money. KB, when Kbeer was 15, Jason used her sexual moans in video games or animations, despite her being a literal child. He waited until she was 18 to marry her, basically grooming her the entire time. It's fucking vile. They are some of the most abusive individuals I've ever seen in this fandom. Jason and both Kbeer are horrific transphobes, and from what I've seen, awful racists. They are dirty cunts that I wish nothing worse than hell with. Like, hell or even heaven wouldn't be good. Put them in fucking limbo. They're also having a kid now. <sniffs> that poor child. U18chan is an image posting board that is frequently used for any sort of hentai, but it's unfortunately gotten a large fixing of cub hentai on there which is disgusting but yeah it's it was it's frequently had a reputation of hosting cub artwork specifically for artists like zosh on there um but yeah it's a disgusting sight <laughs> frankly to say the least connor goodwolf Another Ohio firm was like Len Gilbert, Connor Goodwolf is a horrific individual, has done many things, like walk into an airport with a loaded handgun. He does run an anti-pedo kind of thing, which is respectable, yes, but the individual has done enough abuses himself and other horrific things that I've even told the story of some of his victims in, um, but we will I'll link that to another video. Ryan Hill is a terrorist. <laughs> He really is. He is an individual who, in the fandom, multiple times to shoot up cons, apparently or allegedly walked into MFF with a loaded machine gun, or it might have been another con on the west coast, but he allegedly walked into the con with a, an M4 or some form of loaded machine gun and was tackled by security. Um, I don't know what happened there. But he's numerous times taken accountability for the MFF gas attack of 2014, which is kind of disgusting. But yeah, he's mentally and physically fucking unstable. Milo Yiannopoulos is a reactionary commentator for the alt-right and has said some really fucking disgusting things. But he was egged on by the furry raiders and many other groups to join the furry fandom and he had multiple other artists make images for him to join and he threatened to go to MFF for some form of publicity stunt for himself and it didn't work because MFF just banned the fucker and he didn't go in the end so fucking asshole. My Leonopolis Zero MFF won. Bowman Fox is a failed YouTuber and failed Twitch streamer who has been known to have sent his penis, admittedly he'd admitted to this to knowing the child's age but sending his penis to a minor and has even sat in call while the individuals who were talking about his shit were being exposing him he was sitting in chat joking about it as if he was like aha it's okay we were best friends and shit like that you're vile he's also not been known to groom other individuals an individual from my own country who has been unbelievably defensive of this individual despite the fact that they are f under the age of 18 and Bowman being 20 years old and being, as they put it, extremely nice to them. Tumbles the Stair Dragon. Tumbles the Stair Dragon was an individual who attended uh, Furry Week in Atlanta in, I believe, 2014. It was real old. But he went to a groom party and when he realised that he wasn't going to get any pussy, or he wasn't getting any pussy like everyone else was, he decided to kill himself or I believe he got into a confrontation before and was kicked out of the room. With this he decided to kill himself. How he done that was to jump down a flight of stairs, concrete stairs repeatedly but the flight was only about f five to six steps high. Oh, nigga. Ah. So <laughs> it, he just ended up doing it multiple times then ending up in the hospital even though he don't think he'd be that hurt from that but 
Yeah, he made fandom history because of that. Michael! Don't leave me here! Michael! Michael! Help me! Right, level 6 for the second time I've had to re-record this, but yeah. Beginning with Bismol Cheshire Fox. Bismol Cheshire Fox was an individual who was big on Vine, but ended up having their career come crashing down when they were exposed to be possibly in a romantic and sexual relationship with a child. And another first suitor by the name of um, Blitz or Chaos or something like that. Um, but they were under the age of 18, I believe 16 or 15, and um, Busy was over the age of 18 to possibly 18 to 20. The thing about this is they did actually technically get away with it, despite the fact that it was during a time when everyone wasn't really paying mind to individual conflicts and was taking more of a political stance, so they were pretty much able to just get away with it. The political war from 2016 to 2018. This was a period during the fandom when Trump was elected into power and it caused a big shake up in the fandom because they, every, a lot of people in the fandom are very proud, pro, uh, proudly or pro LGBT and it was very uncertain for what would be happening so the republicans who were happy that they won liberals and stuff that weren't happy so when they clashed it frequently saw people being exposed or ousted or witch hunted and a lot of careers ruined which then drove them to joining raiders and shit like that and other alt-right groups that would support them it was a very bad time as People like Kiro were exposed during this time, this even though it wasn't politically motivated, pieces where people like Diesel Raccoon lost a lot of their followers. People like uh, Two Griffin will come up later, were brought out of the woodwork, people like Candy Lupine and many more. Um, but yeah, it was a horrific time. The Lockjaw Art Murders. The Lockjaw Art Murders was a murder or a homicide committed by Tanya R. Dillard and Jacob T. Berkowitz, two members of the fandom, or Fursu, who were under the Fursu. Uh, makers by the name of Lockjaw Arts. These individuals had tricked a an individual by the name of Hector Mendez Hernandez into replying to a dating uh, thing on Craigslist, lured this individual into a car, murdered him and robbed him for everything that he had, which is vile, absolutely disgusting. In 2020 they were charged with murder with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to commit murder, robbery with a deadly weapon and conspiracy to commit robbery. I don't know how many years that would get you in there, but um, it was horrific what they, these individuals did and it was one of the lesser known things as it hasn't really been well documented or hasn't been brought up as much. Our next topic is one that only curators really know or creators in general, Tony Hinshaw. Tony Hinshaw is an individual on YouTube that every single creator will meet at least once and you'll notice it especially as if you're a small creator but Tony Hinshaw is an individual who speaks about a lot of different things and has, and has tried to intersect himself into drama but he he spams comment sections with needless bullshit and has harassed multiple of my friends into practically having to block him on YouTube you can't really block him on other sites because he will just remake more and more accounts and it will won't you won't be able to actually get anything from it so it's someone you will always meet any creator out there you will always meet tony he'll come in dead of night and he'll fucking annoy your comment section don't hug cacti don't hug cacti or more so their um leader it's of the first suit making business uh lucky coyote was exposed in 2019 for having abused multiple animals and zoophilic content made zoophilic content i believe or had some form of zoophile relationships and was in contact with very prominent zoophiles within the community um since then she's featured in the um <laughs> in the fandom documentary and <laughs> basically nothing really has happened they've uh, i believe stuff has been sent to the fbi but that could be way way wrong from what I thought but I'll link a better video up above. Canny Lupine. Canny Lupine is a right-wing libertarian who believes that transgender individuals should be culled to say the least. He's a disgusting individual who basically is anti-LGBT, proud Christian, proud everything. He's vile basically is what I'm trying to say. He was one of the individuals who was linked with um, Free For All that I mentioned before and had a lot of horrific input within the unofficial chat that was made. To the Ranting Griffin. 
To the Randy Griffin as a disgraced comedian or an ex cop, he frequently made jokes about people's or people's ethnicities and at the expense of other individual sexualities. Not a very good thing when half the fandom's gay, but you know. He was also linked heavily with the Furry Raiders, as we've seen in the RMFC cease, cease agreement or cease and desist agreement that was sent to the individual who started the movement. It said that To Griffin was a subsidi uh, beneficiary to. Um, the cease and desist but we've seen it more so when he came out about the raiders and everything and making kind of a video talking about it which is where he kind of agreed with them mostly to say the least he's part of them and now finally the beautiful the best community on planet earth the ones that we stay in the shadows we help the community people say oh you don't help the community because you're just talking about drama when we're speaking about horrific individuals that you should watch out for the furry commentary community this is a lot of good individuals people like you know, lovely benji me shinzo when he wants to be misha when he wants to be uh joel called musical caro even um kane is a good commentary channel if you want to kane the circle and many others have made amazing videos and simple nix is one another one to mention spockter but spockter does more so generalized videos now but they were an amazing community that you should watch more of thank you all for watching uh thank you very much to sticks baddie q and rue is sleepy rue is sleepy is absolutely amazing thank you to all of you who donated and helped me reach my goal with my treatment so yeah i just can't thank you guys enough and if you want to go join my discord server or check out the twitter for more content from me check out the channel feel free to subscribe you guys have just been amazing to me and with the recent growth on the channel i just can't thank you guys enough it's absolutely amazing thank you all so much